I'm Chris Ray. I'm a research associate at the University of Colorado in Boulder, and I study the growth and fluctuation in plant and animal populations. The animal I've been studying longest is the American pika. Pikas are closely related to rabbits, but they're a lot smaller, about as big as your fist. And they have absurdly cute, rounded ears like Mickey Mouse. Everything on a pika is rounded uh, to conserve heat because they don't hibernate. Pikas have a really fast metabolic rate in order to generate heat to make it through those really cold alpine winters. Of course, in the summertime, all that heat is a problem. So pikas have to have access to really cool microclimates to survive the summer. The American pika lives only in taluses, boulder fields, basically piles of jumbled rock, where down among the rocks they can find cool little pika-sized caves. And it really helps them stay cooler if there are subsurface water and ice features in the soils beneath where they live. So in the summertime, they need access to these really cool microclimates to shed heat. But in the wintertime, in addition to the heat that they generate, they need snow cover in the high alpine. Like up at the Niwot LTER site where I study the pikas, it gets very cold there over the winter. And the wind blows very hard. And if there's no snow cover, if the snow cover has blown off, um, we think that the pikas' survival rate goes down. What I'm most interested in right now is whether the pika can be used as an indicator species for the health of our western water resources. Here in the west, we're extremely dependent on the alpine snowpack as our main source of water. And with global change, we're increasingly concerned that there may be uh, problems with the alpine snowpack. I'm really lucky in that I'm studying the pika at the Niwot Ridge LTER site because there are other researchers up there studying climate, snow dynamics, the dynamics of plants and other animals up there. We can all work together to look at effects of global change on these alpine ecosystems. A big part of the NIWAT LTER mission is training students. And so the great thing about working on pikas is that they occur in fantastic locations and they're cute and so it's easy to recruit students. And recruiting a lot of students for this project is really important because what we're doing is studying uh, stress on this animal. Um, and the last thing we want to do is stress them a lot during handling. So the more hands, the better, so we can process these animals faster. Um, every animal that we trap uh, gets ear tags so we can study its long-term survival. And then we take a bunch of samples. Uh, we take blood and tissue and hair and urine and feces, and we collect all the ectoparasites. Those are the fleas and ticks and mites that can carry parasites and other disease agents. Pikas have been studied for a long time at the NIWAT LTER, and unfortunately what I've found in the last few years is that the survival of these animals here is much lower than it used to be here, and much lower than it is in other locations. It's about a third what it is in other parts of the range. So far what it looks like is that pikas up on NIWAT Ridge are experiencing lower temperatures in the wintertime. I think the snow is blowing off of their locations, and they don't have that insulation that they need. Um, they're experiencing higher summer temperatures. They're more stressed She's during the summer when we handle them, judging by the stress on. metrics that we see when we examine their blood. And those things so far can explain this difference in survival rate. If alpine pikas need a thick snowpack to keep them warm over the wintertime, and if they need subsurface water and ice features to keep them cool in the summertime, then we have something in common with pikas because the snowpack and the subsurface water and ice, those are both what feed our western water reservoirs. So in context with the other work that's going on at Niwot Ridge, my work allows us to understand whether or not pikas can be used as an indicator species for the health of western water resources. Mm -hmm.